translation of Zahi Bukhari, Book 51, Wills and Testaments. Usaya. Volume 4, Book 51, Number 1. Narrated Abdullah bin Umar. Allah's Apostle said, It is not permissible for any Muslim who has something to will to stay for two nights without having his last will and testament written and kept ready with him. Number 2, Narrated Amr bin Al-Harith the brother of the wife of Allah's Apostle. Juwara bin Al-Harith when Allah's Apostle died, he did not leave any dirham or dinar that is money, a slave or a slave woman or anything else except his white mule, his arms and a piece of land which he had given in charity. Number 3, Narrated Talha bin Musarif, I asked Abdullah bin Abu Ofa, did the Prophet make a will? He replied, no, I asked him, how is it then that the making of a will has been enjoined on people, or that they are ordered to make a will? He replied, the Prophet bequeathed Allah's book that is Quran. Number 4, narrated Al-Zwad, in the presence of Aisha, some people mentioned that the Prophet had appointed Ali by will as his successor. Aisha said, when did he appoint him by will? Verily when he died he was resting against my chest or said, in my lap and he asked for a wash basin and then collapsed while in that state, and I could not even perceive that he had died, so when did he appoint him by will? Number 5, Narrated Sa'd and Abu Waikas, the Prophet came visiting me while I was sick in Mecca, Amir the sub-narrator said, and he disliked to die in the land, whence he had already migrated, he that is the Prophet said, may Allah bestow his mercy on Ibn Afra Sa'd bin Kaula, I said, O Allah's Apostle, may I will all my property and charity? He said, no. I said, then may I will half of it? He said, no, I said, one third? He said, yes, one third, yet even one third is too much. It is better for you to leave your inheritors wealthy than to leave them poor begging others, and whatever you spend for Allah's sake will be considered as a charitable deed even the handful of food you put in your wife's mouth. Allah may lengthen your aid so that some people may benefit by you, and some others be harmed by you. At that time Sa'd had only one daughter. Number 6, Narrated Ibn Abbas, I recommend that people reduce the proportion of what they bequeath by will to the fourth of the whole legacy, for Allah's Apostle said, one third, yet even one third is too much. Number 7, Narrated Sa'd, I fell sick and the Prophet paid me a visit. I said to him, O Allah's Apostle, I invoke Allah that he may not let me expire in the land whence I migrated that is Mecca, he said, may Allah give you health and let the people benefit by you. I said, I want to will my property, and I have only one daughter and I want to will half of my property to be given in charity, he said, half is too much. I said, then I will one third. He said, one third, yet even one third is too much. The narrator added, so the people started to will one third of their property and that was permitted for them. Number 8, narrated Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, Utbra bin Abi Waikas entrusted his son to his brother Sa'd bin Abi Waikas saying, The son of the slave girl of Zamai is my illegal son, take him into your custody. So during the year of the conquest of Mecca Sa'd took the boy and said, This is my brother's son whom my brother entrusted to me. Abu bin Zams got up and said, he is my brother and the son of the slave girl of my father and was born on my father's bed. Then both of them came to Allah's Apostle and Sa'd said, O Allah's Apostle, this is my brother's son whom my brother entrusted to me. Then Abu bin Zamah got up and said, This is my brother and the son of the slave girl of my father. Allah's Apostle said, O Abu bin Zamah, this boy is for you as the boy belongs to the bed where he was born and for the adulterer is the stone that is deprivation, then the Prophet said to his wife Sa'udah bin Zama'a, screen yourself from this boy, when he saw the boy's resemblance to Utba. Since then the boy did not see Sa'udah till he died. Number 9, Narrated Anas, a Jew crushed the head of a girl between two stones. She was asked, who has done so to you, so and so? So and so? Till the name of the Jew was mentioned, whereupon she nodded in agreement, so the Jew was brought and was questioned till he confessed. The Prophet then ordered that his head be crushed with stones. Number 10, narrated Ibn Abbas, the custom in old days was that the property of the deceased would be inherited by his offspring. 
as for the parents of the deceased, they would inherit by the will of the deceased. Then Allah cancelled from that custom whatever he wished and fixed for the male double the amount inherited by the female, and for each parent a sixth of the whole legacy and for the wife an eighth or a fourth and for the husband a half or a fourth. Number 11, narrated Abu Hurairah, a man asked the Prophet, O Allah's Apostle, what kind of charity is the best? He replied, to give in charity when you are healthy and greedy hoping to be wealthy and afraid of becoming poor. Don't delay giving in charity till the time when you are on the deathbed when you say, give so much to so and so and so much to so and so, and at that time the property is not yours but it belongs to so and so that is your inheritors. Number 12, narrated Abu Hurairah, the Prophet said, the signs of a hypocrite are three, whenever he speaks he tells a lie. Whenever he is entrusted he proves dishonest. Whenever he promises he breaks his promise. Number 13, narrated Urwa bin Azabir, Hakim bin Azim said, I asked Allah's apostle for something, and he gave me, and I asked him again and he gave me and said, O oh Hakim, this wealth is green and sweet that is as tempting as fruits, and whoever takes it with the upper that is giving hand is better than the lower that is taking hand. Hakim added, I said, O Allah's Apostle, by him who has sent you with the truth I will never demand anything from anybody after you till I die. Afterwards Abu Bakr used to call Hakim to give him something but he refused to accept anything from him. Then Umar called him to give him something but he refused. Then Umar said, O Muslims, I offered to him that is Hakim a share which Allah has ordained for him from this booty and he refuses to take it. Thus Hakim did not ask anybody for anything after the Prophet, till he died, may Allah bestow his mercy upon him. Number 14, narrated Ibn Umar, I heard Allah's Apostle saying, All of you are guardians and responsible for your charges the ruler that is Imam is a guardian and responsible for his subjects. And a man is a guardian of his family and is responsible for his charges. And a lady is a guardian in the house of her husband and is responsible for her charge and a servant is a guardian of the property of his master and is responsible for his charge. I think he also said, and a man is a guardian of the property of his father. Number 15, narrated Anas, the Prophet said to Abu Talha, I recommend that you divide this garden amongst your relatives. Abu Talha said, O Allah's Apostle, I will do the same. So Abu Talha divided it among his relatives and cousins. Ibn Abi says, when the Quranic verse Warn your nearest kinsman. Quran 26 verse 214 was revealed, the Prophet started calling the various big families of Quraysh, O Bani Fir, O Bani Adi. Abu Hurairah said, when the verse Warn your nearest kinsman was revealed, the Prophet said in a loud voice, O people of Quraysh. Number 16, narrated Abu Hurairah, when Allah revealed the verse. Warn your nearest kinsman, Allah's Apostle got up and said, O people of Quraysh or said similar words. By that is save yourself from the hellfire as I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. O Bani Abad Manaf. I cannot save you from Allah's punishment, O Safiya, the aunt of Allah's Apostle. I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. O Fatima bint Muhammad. Ask me anything from my wealth. But I cannot save you from Allah's punishment. Number 17, narrated Anas, the Prophet saw a man driving a badana that is camel for sacrifice and said to him, Ride on it. The man said, O Allah's Apostle, it is a bandana. The Prophet repeated his order and on the third or fourth time he said, Ride it, woe to you or said, May Allah be merciful to you. Number 18, narrated Abu Hurairah, Allah's Apostle saw a man driving a badana and said to him, Ride on it, and on the second or the third time he added, Woe to you! Number 19, narrated Ibn Abbas, the mother of Sa'd bin Abada died in his absence. He said, O Allah's Apostle! My mother died in my absence. Will it be of any benefit for her if I give Sadaka on her behalf? The Prophet said, Yes, Sa'd said, I make you a witness that I gave my garden called al makraf in charity on her behalf. Number 20, narrated Kab bin Malik, I said, O Allah's Apostle, 
for the acceptance of my repentance I wish to give all my property and charity for Allah's sake through his apostle, he said, it is better for you to keep some of the property for yourself. I said, then I will keep my share in Kaibar. Number 21, narrated Ibn Abbas, some people claim that the order in the above verse is cancelled, by Allah, it is not cancelled, but the people have stopped acting on it. There are two kinds of guardians who are in charge of the inheritance. One is that who inherits. Such a person should give of what he inherits to the relatives, the orphans and the needy, etc. The other is that who does not inherit for example the guardian of the orphans, such a person should speak kindly and say to those who are present at the time of distribution, I cannot give it to you as the wealth belongs to the orphans. Number 22, narrated Aisha, a man said to the Prophet, My mother died suddenly, and I think that if she could speak, she would have given in charity. May I give in charity on her behalf? He said, Yes. Give in charity on her behalf. Number 23, narrated Ibn Abbas, Sa'ad bin Abada consulted Allah's apostle saying, My mother died and she had an unfulfilled vow. The Prophet said, Fulfill it on her behalf. Number 24, narrated Ibn Abbas, That the mother of Sa'ad bin Abada the brother of Bani Sa'ad died in Sa'ad's absence. So he came to the Prophet saying, O Allah's Apostle, my mother died in my absence, will it benefit her if I give in charity on her behalf? The Prophet said, Yes. Sad said, I take you as my witness that I give my garden al makraf in charity on her behalf. Number 25, narrated Ezari, Urwa bin Azabir said that he asked Aisha about the meaning of the Quranic verse. And if you fear that you will not deal fairly with the orphan girls then marry other women of your choice. Quran 4 verse 2 to 3, Aisha said, It is about a female orphan under the guardianship of her guardian who is inclined towards her because of her beauty and wealth, and likes to marry her with a mahar less than what is given to women of her standard. So they that is guardians were forbidden to marry the orphans unless they paid them a full appropriate mahar otherwise they were ordered to marry other women instead of them. Later on the people asked Allah's Apostle about it. So Allah revealed the following verse. They ask your instruction O Muhammad. Regarding women. Say. Allah instructs you regarding them Quran 4 verse 127, and in this verse Allah indicated that if the orphan girl was beautiful and wealthy, her guardian would have the desire to marry her without giving her an appropriate mahar equal to what her peers could get. But if she was undesirable for lack of beauty or wealth, then he would not marry her, but seek to marry some other woman instead of her. So, since he did not marry her when he had no inclination towards her, he had not the right to marry her when he had an interest in her, unless he treated her justly by giving her a full mahar and securing all her rights. Number 26, narrated Ibn Umar, in the lifetime of Allah's apostle, Umar gave in charity some of his property a garden of date palms called Thamga. Umar said, O Allah's Apostle, I have some property which I prize highly and I want to give it in charity. The Prophet said, Give it in charity that is as an endowment with this land and trees on the condition that the land and trees will neither be sold nor given as a present, nor bequeathed, but the fruits are to be spent in charity. So Umar gave it in charity, and it was for Allah's cause, the emancipation of slaves for the poor, for guests, for travelers, and for kinsmen. The person acting as its administrator could eat from it reasonably and fairly, and could let a friend of his eat from it provided he had no intention of becoming wealthy by its means. Number 27, narrated Aisha, the following verse. If a guardian is well off, let him claim no remuneration that is wages, but if he is poor, let him have for himself what is just and reasonable. Quran 4 verse 6 was revealed in connection with the guardian of an orphan, and it means that if he is poor he can have for himself from the orphan's wealth what is just and reasonable according to the orphan's share of the inheritance. Number 28, narrated Abu Huraira, the Prophet said, Avoid the seven great destructive sins. The people inquire, O Allah's Apostle, what are they? He said, To join others in worship along with Allah, to practice sorcery, to kill the life which Allah has forbidden except for a just cause, according to Islamic law, to eat up riba usury, to eat up an orphan's wealth, to give back to the enemy and fleeing from the battlefield at the time of fighting, 
and to accuse, chaste women, who never even think of anything touching chastity and are good believers. Number 29, Narrated Anas, When Allah's Apostle came to Medina. He did not have any servant. Abu Talha Anas' stepfather took me to Allah's Apostle and said, O oh Allah's Apostle! Anas is a wise boy, so let him serve you. So, I served him at home and on journeys. If I did anything, he never asked me why I did it, and if I refrained from doing anything, he never asked me why I refrained from doing it. Number 30, narrated Anas bin Malik, Abu Talha had the greatest wealth of date palms amongst the answer in Medina, and he prized above all his wealth his garden by Irua, which was situated opposite the mosque of the Prophet, the Prophet used to enter it and drink from its fresh water. When the following divine verse came by no means shall you attain piety until you spend of what you love, Quran 3 verse 92, Abu Talha got up saying, O Allah's Apostle! Allah says, you will not attain piety until you spend of what you love, and I prize above Allah my wealth, by a rule which I want to give in charity for Allah's sake, hoping for its reward from Allah. So you can use it as Allah directs you. On that the Prophet said, Bravo! It is a profitable or perishable property. Ibn Maslama is not sure as to which word is right, that is profitable or perishable. I have heard what you have said, and I recommend that you distribute this amongst your relatives. On that Abu Talha said, O Allah's Apostle! I will do as you have suggested, so, Abu Talha distributed that garden amongst his relatives and cousins. Number 31, narrated Ibn Abbas, a man said to Allah's Apostle, My mother died, will it benefit her if I give in charity on her behalf? The Prophet replied in the affirmative. The man said, I have a garden and I make you a witness that I give it in charity on her behalf. Number 32, narrated Anas, when the Prophet ordered that the mosque be built, he said, O Bani and Najjar, suggest to me a price for this garden of yours. They replied, By Allah, we will demand its price from none but Allah. Number 33, narrated Ibn Umar, when Umar got a piece of land in Kaibar, he came to the Prophet saying, I have got a piece of land, better than which I have never got. So what do you advise me regarding it? The Prophet said, If you wish you can keep it as an endowment to be used for charitable purposes. So, Umar gave the land in charity that is as an endowment on the condition that the land would neither be sold nor given as a present, nor bequeathed, and its yield would be used for the poor, the kinsmen, the emancipation of slaves, jihad, and for guests and travelers and its administrator could eat in a reasonable just manner, and he also could feed his friends without intending to be wealthy by its means. Number 34, narrated Ibn Umar, Umar got some property in Kaibar and he came to the Prophet and informed him about it. The Prophet said to him, If you wish you can give it in charity. So Umar gave it in charity that is as an endowment the yield of which was to be used for the good of the poor, the needy, the kinsmen and the guests. Number 35, narrated Anas bin Malik, when Allah's Apostle came to Medina, he ordered that a mosque be built. He said, O Bani and Najjar, suggest me a price for the garden of yours. They replied, By Allah, we will not ask its price except from Allah. Number 36, narrated Ibn Umar, once Umar gave a horse and charity to be used in holy fighting. It had been given to him by Allah's Apostle. Umar gave it to another man to ride. Then Umar was informed that the man put the horse for sale, so he asked Allah's Apostle whether he could buy it. Allah's Apostle replied, You should not buy it, for you should not take back what you have given in charity. Number 37, narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's Apostle said, My heirs will not inherit a dinar or a dirham that is money, for whatever I leave excluding the adequate support of my wives and the wages of my employees is given in charity. Number 38, narrated Ibn Umar, when Umar founded an endowment he stipulated that its administrator could eat from it and also feed his friend on the condition that he would not store anything for himself from it. Number 39, narrated Anas, the Prophet said at the time of building the mosque, O Ban, and Najjar, suggest to me a price for your garden. They replied, We do not ask its price except from Allah.
Number 40, narrated Jabir bin Abdullah al-Ansari, My father was martyred on the day of the Ghazwal Vuhud and left six daughters and some debts to be paid. When the time of plucking the date fruits came, I went to Allah's Apostle and said, O oh Allah's Apostle, You know that my father was martyred on Uhud's day and owed much debt, and I wish that the creditors would see you. The Prophet said, Go and collect the various kinds of dates and place them separately in heaps I did accordingly and called him. On seeing him, the creditors started claiming their rights pressingly at that time. When the Prophet saw how they behaved, he went round the biggest heap for three times and sat over it and said, Call your companions that is the creditors, then he kept on measuring and giving them, till Allah cleared all my father's debts. By Allah, it would have pleased me that Allah would clear the debts of my father even though I had not taken a single date to my sisters. But by Allah, all the heaps were complete, as they were and I looked at the heap where Allah's apostle was sitting and noticed as if not a single date had been taken thereof.